Well, after all that warm-up, let's check out the inside of the store. Don't be afraid to say weird things. You're an authority figure. They can't do anything to you, except for when they eventually kill me, because I'm very fl I'm very flimsy. Do I have any points yet? Only five, uh, 15 more points to go till I get the next point. Which, like, any conversation might give me, actually. Gift books and molten candy. Man from Hemdall series. This just keeps coming up. The display rack is brimming with warm paperbacks and featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Near the old t uh, titles contain the word Hamdal somewhere. Look through the display of books. Rows and rows of Hamdallermen blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from Hamdal and the the Mammoth Riders and the Return to Hamdal and and the Hem <laughs> Man from Hamdal and the Hamdal Man. The Hamdal Hielm Hjelm doll man. Good god, how many are there? Maybe a hundred? Man from Hjelmdal and the sages at the end of the world. Man from Hjelmdal and the false god. Man from Hjelmdal and the, the scorched earth. Man from Hjelmdal, the Hjelmdal colonies. Man from Hjelmdal and the swamp beast. Man from Hjelmdal and the snow crabs. Is that all? Not even close. Man from Hjelmdal in hell. In, in Hjelm. <laughs> Man from Himdal in the forest of the slaves. Man from Himdal under the lake. Man from Himdal, Himdal burning. There's even The Trial of Death, a paternal combat game book set in the world of Himdalerman. Himdalerman, of course, and so much more. Do any of these books call out to me? Pain threshold. Failed. What does it even mean? How do I fail at pain threshold? Nothing of interest, only a silence in the cosmic background of pain radiation. Why would it have... Why would it call out to me in pain? Storekeep, tell me about the Muslim Man books. Oh. Man from Hemdal, a very popular series of adventure novels. She looks at the book with some disdain. They are awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Blood and violence, scantily clad women... Epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. That doesn't sound like something I'd be interested in. At last, someone sensible. She fiddles with her pendant. However, I still urge you to buy one. Can't judge a book by the cover, they say. If you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hyam Dollarman, the man from Hemdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Wow, that's nine. I do not, I cannot afford that. We have to find ourselves some money. Or not, because it's a stupid book that I probably don't, I don't know, maybe it gives me a skill book. A skill update. Skill upgrade. <laughs> when you get it. Mountain of board games. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by the We're All Related merchandise. Let's look at the We're All Related items. An endless variety of source books. Lore books, codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, 2nd edition. There's also a large ha hardbound tome with intricate cover art. The Hunters of Katuk, Boreal Creature Compendium. And a Pick Your Path adventure game book titled Tales of Viral, Cavern of Velkrag. Conceptualization. Books in a board game section? Who wants to read books? Uh, tabletop games require books. Concept conceptualization, get caught up. That's how, you never heard of D&D? Anything that really catches the eye? There's a box that says Viral, 3rd edition mega setting supple supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. That price is steep, but then it's a 3rd edition mega setting supplement, so it makes sense. 
the numbers, they're getting higher. So much higher than I've ever seen. Turkey, what board games do you have here? Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insul uh, Insulinidu Insulinu <laughs> Insulind, I think? Yeah. Insulind. A very educational game for those interested in geography. Raubritte is a fun game of economic compendium, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. I don't feel as if I have kids. Friends are technically like family. She fiddles with her pendant, thinking. For playing with friends, I'd recommend... Uh... Suzerainty. I'm, I'm so boned with some of these names. Suzerainty. Suzerainty. Uh, it's a civilization building game uh, where you build a civilization. Wow. Blow my mind. Then you set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. So, Twilight Imperium. Gotcha. Can't afford that either. Can't afford anything. So what about all these virile things? Lousy auras there. She shudders. No, role-playing games are... Uh, no, role-playing games are popular among the, those types, you know, who are into those kinds of things. Well, yeah, that's what a type is. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. RPGs are the best. This is bait, because we're playing an RPG. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. They have rituals, where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them, though. She looks at the table, crossing her arms. Wow, you're just selling me on this idea. I want to summon a demon. That sounds fucking rad. Wow me, board game. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. The book collections. The book collects the national re uh, recipes of Arda. And then it goes away. It's scary that the messages go away like that, because if you didn't read them in time, now they're just gone. Unlike, uh... Unlike, uh, Pillars of Eternity, for example, the in the interaction spot goes away, and you're like, oh, shit. Oh, uh, let's talk to her. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. The Kirk extends a greeting. Be welcome. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Composure. Her face looks powdery and painted from all the makeup. So are you the owner of the store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice, high-pitched, sounds familiar. You've talked to her before. To the door bell. Oh right, when we when we run the, uh, yeah, we rang in. Hmm, she's the one that's mad at Kuno. So I, I talked to her, giving an impression of Kuno. Oh no. Your daughter's the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me. Was she at her post, doing her job like a proper girl? Jesus. Oh. Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled were you to buy books after talking to her? <laughs> on a graded- I don't want to grade a human being. Technically, but I'm trying- but I'm trying to give- I don't want to give her a good score, because her mom's a hard ass. 10. She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. She's immensely satisfied with the answer. She's immensely satisfied with the answer. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette.
All this pressure has made her really anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails. God, ugh, I've told her not to do that. It's such a disgusting habit. Her voice is firm. She'll get over it. Anxiety is part of life. Oh. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pains. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, man. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You're placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. What you're doing is wrong. Even I know that. And I usually don't know anything. She stands stiff and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. Rhetoric. She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. <laughs> All of a sudden, she exhales sharply, and sh her shoulders slump down. Oh no. She mutters. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. Oh, is she actually, did she actually change or is this bad? There, she returns with a nod. I don't know what to say to you. My husband tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother calls a dull mind. All this stress. She stops, but her mouth keeps moving. She told me she doesn't go to school anymore. Placence nods. She's been too busy helping me here, so she studied at home this trimester. This is a temporary solution, of course. I assure you, I have all people understand the importance of education. She will be back in school uh, the moment the store takes off. Logic. And hell freezes over? Never mind. It's not a good topic to get into. Is she an only child? Yes, I'm afraid so. A real treat she is. It would be so nice if she had... She pauses for a second. No, we can't have... We couldn't have afforded more children, really. Not in this economy. Composure. A glimmer of sadness blinks through the well-crafted exterior. Why not? We're quite busy people, you know. My husband and I. Quite busy. Her voice wavers a bit. Children are a lot of work. You don't look like a father, so I don't expect you to understand. She catches herself at an impoliteness. I'm sorry, I'm sure you understand. Is the husband and its father? Yes. My husband is success a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here, she says gloomily. No matter. Soon we'll both be off for Grand Corin. Wait, Grand Coron, what's that? It's a proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. Her smile is wide. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowds. Better times ahead, for sure. And your husband's also involved in the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you might call a silent partner. Super silent. Almost inaudibly so. Alright, well I had something else in mind. The woman looks aloof. Her features often uh, much softer. Occasionally she glances at her daughter, daughter silhouette. So what if I want to buy a book? And why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with her pendant, then waves her bony fingers directly at you. See those shelves there? Go, be drawn. The slightly pushy way, or like, not even weird, it's just kind of a weirdly off-putting way to sell books. So what type of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves, take a look at yourself. She nudges her glasses. The shelves compel you, don't they? All right, I'll take a look then. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. 
Farewell for now, book peddler. Hmm. Was my head freaking out just now? I think it was, but I, right when I looked at it, I think it stopped. I don't know. I'm sorry, sir. I can't talk right now. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. Empathy. You just can't win. Logic. Out of the rain and into the gutter. What are you doing now? Bath. She looks into her notebook with trepidation. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Suddenly she smiles and perks up and remembering something. Oh, oh! I found something while you were away. What is it? Dick Mullen's hat. I thought this would fit you. She gives you a hat, almost exactly like the one Dick Mullen wears on the covers. Like a thanks for helping me out. Not me, the city I mean. Like a detective does. Wait, where'd you get it? Just what Dick Mullen, just what Dick Mullen would ask? She lowers, lowers her voice. I got it from behind the curtains. I'm not really supposed to go there. A detective hat? Yes, just like the one Dick Mullen wears all the time. She grins. You look way more serious with that. Suddenly she looks back at the infernal scribblings under her nose. Right, I have to get back to my homework now, before mom notices. Man, this is hard. What are you missing here? Why does this feel familiar? <gasps> we got it! Oh my god, we had almost a perfect roll. Because you knew each other. She's been talking to you so openly because you've talked before. Hang on, so you know me. We've met before. Yes! I used to stand out there all the time before Mother told me to focus on my homework. You've been running around for several days, talking about small church- about small churches and how everyone betrayed you, sir. Talking about small churches? Did I ever talk to you? Of course. You stopped by a few times. She looks at you intently. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. Thanks, I'm trying. Yeah, I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. The lieutenant slowly, ever so slowly, realizes something. Party eyes. Yes, of course. That makes sense. Party eyes. You know, like a cat in the dark. All big and wide-eyed. She giggles at the thought. It certainly looked odd on a man. Composure. The swiveling eyes of a loony drug addict. That's what she meant. You were probably gurning, too. Savoir faire. Sa savoir faire. <laughs> Good thing she didn't say party eyes loud. Her mother's nearby. Electrochemistry. Fuck yeah, you should get some party eyes right now. Snap those sequins on you, boy. Oh, wow. My body had a lot to say about drugs. Does that mean I've been taking partaking in narcotics? Oh, baby, that's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. So why didn't you tell me you knew me to be... Uh, so why didn't you tell me that you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to do that. She looks puzzled. Fair. Thanks, I've learned something about myself today. I'm glad I could help, sir. She smiles a wide, helpful smile. Okay, bye. See you around, Annette. Oh no, I've been a drug boy full of drugs. Of all the drugs, so many drugs. Now I've got a hat? I don't have a hat yet. I can get plus one encyclopedia with no consequences. Neat. If anything, this wide-rimmed hat looks even better than the hat Dick Mullen wears. Dick Mullen's stupid and not even real. You're real. Your brain is real. Your real brain your real real brain is inside the hat. Yeah, it is. And now I've got even more encyclopedia power, taking it to a terrifying six. My encyclopedia power is going to come bursting out my skull. There will be thousands dead in the catastrophe that follows. 
So it's from behind the curtain where she's not supposed to go. Which, that, that creepy shadow that we get. I don't know, what little shadow we can kind of glean from back there looks creepy. That's for sure. Shelf of crime novels. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over again. Perception. A couple spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. Let's take a look. Crime fiction. Such a disgrace. An asinine misinterpretation of the physical attributes and arduous everyday work of actual police officers. Those books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardship of year after year coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth of it at all. Now, would you like a list of books found on the shelf? Sure. You see, Dick Mullen on the job. Job. Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. Mullen. Dick Mullen and the murder in the orchard. And the sordid affair of Dick Mullen. A king is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen. An obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Dauntless Dick. Dick Mullen's funeral pyre. The murder of Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen dies? Oh no, it turns out he faked it to solve a case. Oh no, it's like the shitty Sherlock show. Are there more? Yes. There's also the dame who did it. Farewell, my Mullen. Faking death seems to be a common trope in the Mullen series. The morbid tales of Dick Mullen. A dark tide turns. Tragedy calls for Dick Mullen. Another one with the fake death. And, of course, Dick Mullen, the murderer. In order to catch it. <laughs> In order to catch a murderer, Dick Mullen must become a murderer. Oh no, that's what I said earlier. Shit. After all this, you still haven't found the answer to the one question that matters. Who is Dick Mullen? Who is Dick Mullen? What? That was supposed to be an easy one. Your attempt to grasp at the answer fails. It seems very close by, pulsating, just out of reach. But now I'm boned. Ah. So you can only open up white checks by putting another point into that skill or something? I don't know. Storekeep, what's all this crime fiction? Oh, crime. Robberies. She lowers her voice. Even sexual crimes. You can't lower your voice slow enough to not get heard by your daughter. I'm further away. <laughs> We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories. Sort all that out. You're a... A police officer. Apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. Oh no. Oh no. She's a wrong, and all of her brain is wrong bad. All right, let's just go further in. A quaint picture, book for sure. Very colorful. It's a tome of fascist magic, rather candid. <laughs> Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. <laughs> okay. Another boring book. Just discarded here. Shelf of Paranormal Books. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Let's take a look around. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, balance. Rhetoric. These three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others in the shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Oh, oh no. How's that work? 
It serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people you, you don't have access to, uh, and which costs more than, you, than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway, without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything, though it is important to note when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Does this book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium. It even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from. How to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver. Uh, there's even a chapter on the ancient Serenese tradition of using duck gall bladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply. Nothing worth buying. Yeah, I would think so. Dora Keep, what books are these? Hmm, sir. Please no browsing in that shelf. She narrows her eyes. That wisdom is not for free. No browsing. You, just, what, you're supposed, to blind, you're supposed to just blindly pick them up at random and buy them? It's freaking me out how the, these book covers, by the way, all blend together and their spines have a continuous texture on them. That's trippy. I can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no. A police store? What? Opening a pol- What the- Are you okay, ma'am? What are you talking about? Uh, on one hand, it addresses an issue which is just people not having the finances needed in order to seek the health care that they need. But on the other hand, it seeks- It just speaks to snake- uh, snake oil salesmen and, and tonic peddlers who uh, lie about healthcare and claim to have solutions when they don't. And the reason why the solutions are cheap is because they're imaginary. Wee! And so they're just taking advantage of people who are vulnerable and in need by taking what little money they do have while not solving their problem. Homeopathy. Map wall. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulind, a map of Revacol, and a map of Martinez. Can I have the map of Revacol, please? Look at the map of Revacol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the River Esperant, countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta, it says, a great artificial heart at the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the megacity. They sound rich to you. This is Revacol East. And west of the river? Ulrun. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Faubourg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. And Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait, there it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Revical Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost coal city, to be honest. Volition. No. This is, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have. But it's still something. Streets. And sodium lights. The sky. The world. You're still alive. Let's look at insulin. This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is Lekailo. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Samanese Islands. Ile de Fantome. What else? 
Ozon, Laurentide, Basse à la Mer, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands, all just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white. Disintegrating into mathematics. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Kylo. In a bookstore. It's you. Squint first. Can you see cities on the islands? You can. On Kylo. Revacol. A single black star. On Ozone. Fond de l'air. And Vermando on the archipelagos, Coyant Moren, Villiers on Semenin, Old Duvai, and on Laurentide, Dior of the Seven Seas. 850 million people live on these little dots, an oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. At the edges, the ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Mundi is the north azimuth. Grad is the northeast azimuth. Samara is the east azimuth. Sol is the west azimuth. Isolus, they're called. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian, unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. You have little idea what they are. Distant stars? Gods? But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolus are immeasurably large compared to you and very, very far away. Conceptualization. Perhaps they are gods. Gods of distance and outer dust. Let's look at Martinez. It's not really a map, it's a tourist thing. A picture postcard with buildings on it, drawn from an isometric perspective. A date in the upper right corner says 48. Still, it's detailed, could be pretty useful for scouting ahead. You see the jagged boxes of Industrial Harbor, even the whirling in, ra whirling in rags is there. Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer, the map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore, and besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is, seven, is 90 cents, though. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? That old thing? It's not a date map, a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago. They then also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. Rhetoric. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? They didn't get far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. You can either steal it or buy it. Kind of awkward to steal it when you just fucking introduce the fact that you're trying to buy it and in the first place I'm just gonna buy it She nods always good to be informed of your surroundings even if it's a wrong map. It's a bad wrong. Oh well We have a map a worn and torn map of the Martinez area dating from 48 a title on the top reads Binevu e River Col. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sight read some of these things, and that's just gonna be what we get because I, if I agonize over pronunciation, I'm gonna lose my mind. I can't even tell how many different languages we're playing with here, or it's like accent styles. It's a bit out of date, as was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. The worn map features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides in the upper right corner. Let's take a look at the grid. 
Your finger moves to the various streets across Rue de Saint Ghislaine, Rue de Saint Cispar, over Saint Brun, and Martinez North. Finally, coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, though the map gives no such indication itself. For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal, then press the map tab. Oh my god, I finally have a map. I bet the M opened. Yay! Suddenly we have context for where we are and how big the area is and where we're going. I have no idea if this map is the entire game or if it's just this particular location, but we have some context. At least. It's just something to work with. So I should be right here, right? I think. I think we started at this building. I think this is the backyard with the corpse. Then I went up here to these people and then went down through here. So we've been through this area so far. And then right over here is the building I'm at. All right. That's good to know. And this is like a big complicated building with lots of different people to buzz because there was a lot of buzzers on that thing. But yeah, like as expected, I should be able to loop back around behind here and check out some stuff. I don't know if you get secret ways into the into the company area, but at the very least there was just stuff behind the tree that looked interactable. But then yeah, going down this way will lead us into entirely different zones. She said I was drunkenly ranting to her about churches, so I'm curious about that a little bit. Hmm. We also have at least one location that's only accessible via water. We can't get there from here at all. Ah. And now when I click on these spots, it tells me where they are on the map. That's also neat. If I want to agonize over these in the future, I know where to get them. All right. Important little piece of progress. It's good to have a sense of space, because otherwise we've just been... I've, I've been, like, in the middle of a dark forest, not knowing which directions would lead to dead ends and which directions would lead in anywhere that would lead to other places. So trying to trying to contextualize my exploring in a way where I can keep track of where I'm going and, like, and like check off in my head which places I can stop thinking about as far as, like, whether or not I can go further that way and so on. It's, like, it's just kind of harder without a map. Especially when we were just clearly starting in the middle of the area. The plaque on the shelf reads biographies of famous people. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Composure. You will attain a place on the shelf one day or die trying. Take a look. Browsing through all the books with their names makes your head spin. None of them seem important or even relevant. It's all just vapid egoism. Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High Speed Love, the tragic, true love story of Jacob Irul and Alfie Delatraz by one Cecilia Averbrook. What's it about? High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournier racers in history. One of them is the madcap drive driver Jacob Irul. Irul? Uh, his blonde mane graces the cover. Next to Iru, <laughs> it's such an unwieldy name for my dialect. Or I'm, I'm just like I don't have no idea how you would pronounce that. Uh, you see a slim biography of an Occidental rock star named the Anti Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. <laughs> Next to that, Rivacolian radio personality Gilam Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. You're interrupting... Uh, you're interrupted by the shopkeep. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though, but not too long. This is like all of the wrong answers about how to run a shop. Uh, it seems like she's gonna get if if her, if they fall victim uh, to being closed. I don't think it's gonna be the the curse. I think it's because she's just not a very good shop owner. There's the off-putting thing of like leaving her small child out in the cold to pet, to draw people in, which she's not doing, even though there's nobody in the shop. Seems like she should be trying to call people into the shop herself if there's no one in there right now. 
Uh, but then all she does is she, like, I tried talking to her and she gets, she has, like, no information about the shop as a concept. She's like, I don't know, just go look at books or whatever. But then when I'm looking at books, they're like, excuse me, please buy something. Stop looking at everything. And it's like, it, it, this is the, the opposite of the atmosphere you want from being in a bookstore. Hell, I remember, uh, cause, like, bookstores are places to just kind of hang out and look around. <sighs> When I met up with Birdcatcher this one time, uh, I had to go find neutral ground to go meet up and have lunch and stuff like that uh, when he was happening to come through California. Uh, and uh, when I was waiting around, I showed up early and I just kind of, there was just a thrift store, bookstore place. Like I used a bookstore, it was like right it was near where we were going. So I just kind of hung out there and just texted him that that's where I was. And I just spent like half, an, like maybe half an hour or 20 minutes just kind of walking around the bookstore and just looking at shelves, and you know what? No one bothered me. Because it's a bookstore. It's like the number one place where you're going to look at shelves for a long time, because... Shit's dense. <laughs> like, th these are environments that are completely dense with crazy-ass details all packed together. She's just hassling me like she's a Best Buy employee. And I can say that, because I was a Best Buy employee. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead, take your time. Time is commerce. Anything I've known on this bookshelf? I would say the woman hums to herself. No, oh, I would say the woman hums to herself. The greatest innocence, yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool, delving to the depths of history, religion, and their relation to in, uh, innocentric power. Innocentic power? Who or what is an innocence? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. She waves her hand as if casting aside the thought. You're a law officer and law officers have at least some education. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the, innocent, the innocentic system. Creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. Do you recommend it? Certainly, it's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. Inland Empire, you feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important, somehow. There's something personal inside. Well, I can't afford it, but cool icon. The greatest innocence. Why is it spelled that way? Huh. I don't trust my Inland Empire that much, though, because it's only, like, level one or some three. Oh, it's level three. Oh. Wow, yeah, it is level three now. Uh, that would make it basically average. Maybe I can trust it when it, when it speaks up sometimes. Still, it's a big cost. I don't really have money yet. Like, at all. I won't like it if I click on this. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Examine this, the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm in a regular polyhedron assembled from bones sticks and straws. Inside, the disturbing fish head with empty eye socket stares at you. From the look of it, it's a traditional Semenese ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. And who are the Semenese? Breakthrough imminent. Ah, uh, it's that one, gotcha. Inhabitants of Ile de Fatome, the Semenine, Semenine Island down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there's nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this, at this time. The curtains remain shut, uh, shut before you. So she uses what seems to be like an eastern charm to ward off evil spirits, and she sells like books that sell you on the idea of basically homeopathy and then out in similar 
lies. Uh, not the greatest source of information, and they're probably the only place in town. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Well, that's never true. Now please go back to browsing books. She fiddles with her pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. Are you, like, trying to hypnotize me? Conceptualization. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you. That's what I thought. Urging you to buy more books. Wait, does she... Does she... Did she have a pendant? On her body? She fiddles with her pendant. Wait, she... Th that's why she kept saying those weird lines? She thinks her pendant will magically make me buy books? Oh no. You fool. <laughs> you fool. You fool, you fool, you fool. You're, you're believing in like magic and shit. She does, yeah, I mean she falls for her own shit. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Whoopsie. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for customers. Her hand is closed around her pendant. Her finger is nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible. That's her talking, right? Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you try to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. What? Oh, because she thinks this place is cursed. Per Perception. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? It's the curse. This is about the curse. That's why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. No, you didn't tell me. You told me it was nothing. Now please, step away from the curtains. She's almost begging you. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. Okay, the way you covered your mouth makes it really seem like somebody was killed there. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please, don't go there. I can't allow it. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. Savoir faire. The curtains do seem frail, suddenly. Not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. But I can sen- But I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? She grabs her pendant again, visibly shaken. My god, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. Whoops. No! I don't care and you can't stop me. I'll open them. She raises her hand and tries to stop you. Please, just talk to me, officer. Come here. Let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Rhetoric. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Let's take a look. Thought complete. White morning. Is that my... Is that my... Rectangle? As an officer? And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally, in a matchbox house, sitting by the window. White flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here. It's awful. A white morning. A modern death. Divorce. Or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him. Make him smaller. Make him less you. 20% bonus zoom out distance. Huh. Hmm. All MOT learning caps raised by one. The Motorix.
That's a bit interesting. Yep, they all have an increased cap. Now they can all be raised to level 7? No, well, no. They can all be increased 7 times. Like, my reaction speed is already 6, and it looks like I can raise it to 12? Which... Is that, I didn't even know that was in, like, the spectrum of how high the numbers could go? A little concerning. Alright, she wants to talk. Let's talk. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you, it's just a storage room for, for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. She recites it like it's a poem, or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. Composure. She's so tense, it's a miracle she hasn't snapped in half yet. Why are you still talking about books? Are you trying to put a spell on me? A spell, as if, she snorts. This place doesn't need any spells or hoodoo mumbo jumbo. This place is, has wonderful energy. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile. Then something breaks. Okay, fine, it's because this place is cursed, just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. What do you mean, ruined everything? We're alone, there's no one else here, and you're only talking to me. Perception. Hosts of hosts, she prays. Guard me, and my honest business. Venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does this curse manifest itself? Shiver runs down the woman. As she looks around in the dimly lit store, the curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease, eating at the very foundation. Her voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Ah, Annette mentioned the previous tenants have experienced some financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the caco demons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie, lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Why didn't you just tell me right away that it was a curse? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The negativism, she shivers, it's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths anchors them. Conceptualization. Wow. Void wraiths. You have new words. Have you sought help with anyone? Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Semenes mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods with the strange, cage-like trinket in the cur on the curtains. The wards help us keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though I now, now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this? She holds the pendant in her palm. Its ochre heart glistens under the lights. No, it's a special Hymian amulet. Blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. She nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert pygmy shamans? That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Yes, but this is what happens when you're just trying to co-opt other people's cultures in order to keep just insult, just insert really awkward 
forced mysticism into your life to fix your problems. That's all itself, just whatever. None of the things you're talking about probably do anything. Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts getting involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. Drama, my liege. You know what this calls for? A para-detective. I'm very good at drama. Convince her to let you investigate the doomed commercial area. Bum, 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 bum. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidity looks like. Wait, what if I don't want to... No, of course... No, let's lie to her. <laughs> Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? She looks skeptical. Don't think I've seen... Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I have returned from the void, a paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one, and you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but you look like one. The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. I'll admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologi parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Here we go! I have the power to de-battle the bad energies. I don't want to co-opt Semini's blood. Uh, I don't like that idea. I am the Void Revenant. I have the powers to uh, de-bad all the bad energies. I should have realized. A pattern lies within the fabric. The hand of fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. I walked into a bookstore to buy books. <laughs> you run a bookstore. All right, that's how easy this is. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us, keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. No problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. She shuffles nervously. If you promise, good officer, then... She pauses. You might be our last hope. Do you swear it? I'm not feeling this vibe anymore. <laughs> On my honor. Thank you, sir. A timid sigh of relief, followed by a cautious smile. There's one thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Uh-oh. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course. The entity, close your eyes, or I have sensed its presence. You have? She gasps. The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch, probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Do you know what, that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney, the passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. Key to the bookstore back door. She shivers. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please... Do return to me after you've looked around. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. Logic, what you discover, probably just some office space. Don't be scared. I have other questions about the curse. Do I though? No, I don't. Farewell. Ooh hoo hoo. This will be fun. Hopefully, this isn't a universe where paranatural things exist. 
Look at extra 20% zoom. Although I, I usually like being zoomed in to look at the pictures, the visuals. So I don't even really notice that it's even further out necessarily. All right. Hopefully I'm right and this is bullshit. Otherwise I'm going to feel bad. 